Okay, here we go. Today we're going to talk about Old Settlers Park up in Round Rock, Texas. This is definitely one of the best courses in the Austin area. In 2014, uh, there was a national tour stop here, uh, but since then, in 2019, the course has been completely redesigned. It's nothing like the course used to be, uh, whereas this course used to be a huge, wide open, windy course. Uh, now, much of the course actually plays back in the woods, so there's a lot more variety in this course. And uh, in terms of difficulty, this is definitely a challenging course. Um, open players, advanced players are going to find their home here. Uh, newer players are probably going to struggle. This is a great course. Um, let's get right into it. So the first hole, 539 feet par 4 actually plays slightly uphill all the way. So these first four holes are gonna be very much like the traditional older lineup at Old Settlers Park. Really wide open long holes. You're gonna be dealing with a lot of wind on most days. Um, so for this one, you're just gonna to have to lay out a huge bomb on your first throw. The second throw, you're gonna to have to have some trees to contend with and the basket is gonna be over on the left side. So you can either go over the top or sneak one through the middle till you end up over here in the trees on the left side. And uh, it's definitely possible to get there in two to make your putt. Um, but you shouldn't be ashamed about taking a par on this hole. Hole two is a very different shot. It's only 190 feet, but it plays left to right and a little bit downhill. A right-handed forehand play or a left-handed backhand play are going to be your best bet here, probably with something a little bit overstable so that you can make it far enough right to access the basket. Otherwise, if you can keep it low on a backhand line, there is a way to access the basket if you split the gap. Hole 3 is deceptively difficult. The basket's only 255 feet away, but there are really only a couple of lines that can get you there. You need to go straight through the middle, or there's kind of a hyzer gap you can take on the right side, but there are very low lines, a little bit longer than you want it to be, and a lot of trees to miss to get there. Hole four is really the last of the old school, old settler style holes, 607 feet. You're really just going to be ripping one out there as hard as you can, probably into a headwind. There's a little bit of a decision whether you want to play up on the berm on the right side or if you're going to play down in the valley in the lower part. But either way, the basket is at least two solid throws away from the tee pad to get up there and get your birdie. Filming this shot, it actually kind of cracked me up. Uh, you can see this... Uh, plastic bag kind of make its way into the frame. It was totally unintentional, but I thought it was really funny. And hole five is where the fun begins. We start playing in the woods. There are really no breaks in the action. This first hole, you really got to hit a pretty narrow gap to get up to the basket on the left side, but there's a very unforgiving fall off into some water on the left side. It's pretty easy to get caught up into the trees on the right side. So it's a very narrow, specific gap, and you really don't want to miss it. Yeah, if I didn't make it clear already, this course is going to test your ability to hit lines. Uh, hole 6 is a very straight tunnel shot with a relatively low ceiling, and it finishes late to the right. So if you've got a long forehand, that'll be a good shot. Left-handed players will probably be okay or you'll have to do a really finessey turnover shot with a late turn on the end. It's possible, but it's not easy. Hole seven's a fun shot if you like being pinched on both sides. Um, probably looking at some kind of a hyzer flip. It only needs to carry 184 feet, but there's a tree right in the fairway and you're pinched on either side. So you gotta be real careful uh, with your drive here uh, to not get caught up in the woods. I found the most success just with a straight mid-range here. After the last three holes, hole eight will probably have you breathing a sigh of relief. It's only 235 feet and it's completely open on the right side as long as you're right-handed. Even if you're left-handed, it's not so bad. 
You do want to be careful not to go long because there is a bit of a drop off there and you don't want to end up in a death putt situation. Hole nine is a really interesting hole, especially in Texas. The first shot is going to require you to make a pretty well placed left to right shot that's actually going to carry down to the bottom of a hill. But you also have to be really careful because once you get to the bottom of the hill, on the right side, there's a wall of bushes that drops right into a creek. So if you can avoid the creek, then you're set up for another decently long shot that needs to play right to left and then back up the hill a little bit that's going to give you access to the basket. I have three to this hole and it made me very happy whenever I did. Hole 10 is a very skinny shot right off the tee. It's only 218 feet, but if you miss that gap, then you're going to be in trouble. I have to admit that I'm left-handed, so I have not once attempted to make that gap. I just take a huge spike hyzer over the left side. But that's probably not an option for most people. I think hole 11 is the craziest hole in this course. You can barely see the basket from the tee box in this hole, but it's way in the distance, way downhill and on the left side. But really your primary concern is going to be hitting the gap in between the trees and over the hill that's right in front of you when you're on the tee box. If you can hit that gap and just carry a gentle hyzer line down to the bottom, you should be okay. But you also have to be careful because if you kick right or just shank it to the right, uh, there's definitely the creek on the right side all the way down on this hole. Hole 12 is a lot like the sort of hole I'd expect to see on a course like Roy G. Guerrero, which is a Southeast Austin course. It's really long, really narrow, and it's really easy to get off the fairway. Um, but like the last few holes, the creek runs all along the right side of this fairway, so you have to be careful to not pull your disc off to the right or kick right. Um, but if you get two really long, really well-placed shots, you can get up there for birdie. And I have three this hole before, but this is the sort of hole where you're not disappointed to walk away with a four. Hole 13 is one of those holes that sprinkled throughout the course that to me feels like you get a little bit of relief. It's by no means a gimme, but it's a relatively straightforward right to left hyzer line. And as long as you can miss all the trees, you should be able to get yourself up there with a chance for birdie. Hole 14 is another hole that for this course feels pretty gettable. It's only 292 feet away. Uh, Left-handed players or people with a decent forehand should be able to get out there without any trouble. But even right-hand, backhand players uh, should be able to get an Anheuser out there without too much trouble at only 292 feet. This is pretty much the last calm before the storm, so you should definitely take this birdie while you can get it. All right, buckle your seat belt for hole 15. This one is 616 feet and a par 4, but it's a solid par 4. Um, off the tee box, you're going to have to nail a really straight, pretty decently long line up to about the point where this guy is standing here on the fairway. And at that point, you're going to have the option of either going right or left. Uh, there's a little creek that runs through the fairway with a big clump of trees in the middle. So you're going to have to find a gap either on the right side or the left side and either swing around that or maybe skip around that to find the basket that's directly placed on the opposite side of these trees in the middle. Um, I've never personally threed this hole. It's definitely possible, um, but this is a hole that I don't mind taking a four on. All right, the fun continues on hole 16. 445 feet, par 4. By the way, I just realized that the numbers listed on UDISC are different than the ones that are on Disc Golf Course Review, and those are different than the posted signs on the course. I'm not going to go back and change it. The point is, 
There's a lot of trees to hit on this hole and it's 445 feet and you need to dodge all of them to get there safely. Um, I have never done better than four in this hole and I have done much worse. I wish you well. Things don't get any easier on hole 17, but it always feels like a little bit of a relief to me because you finally get to make a wide open throw again. So it's 628 feet, but really your first throw needs to get you all the way up to this gap here on the right side. And that's where things start getting technical again. So you're going to have to split this upcoming gap and you've really got a low ceiling to work with. And just to get through this hole to me is more of a placement shot to again, get up on top of the hill to make, the putt for four. Um, I have not come up with a good way to play this hole for three, but many folks are better than I am. Hole 18 isn't a gimme at all, because once again, it's pretty crowded and there's plenty of trees to Kareem off of, but it's at least a makeable line. It's reachable in one shot so that you can pick up a birdie too. Um, the left to right line is there for you if with a forehand or a turnover or a left hand backhand shot. All right, so that's the new layout at Old Settlers Park here in Round Rock, Texas. I definitely think it's one of the top courses in the Austin area. Um, if we were ever to have a pro tour stop here again, it's probably on the short list of three or four courses that would be considered for that kind of an event. And uh, I think it's a really good course. Again, definitely on the more challenging side, this is going to be for more advanced and open players. But if that fits your profile, it's probably worth checking out whenever you're coming through town. Uh, thanks again for watching. I'll try to keep making more of these commentary videos. And, you know, of course, feel free to like and subscribe. I don't really get paid for this, but it always makes me feel better to know that people are actually watching the videos that I make. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good day.